Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Breast Cancer Podcast. Hello, I'm your host, Dr. Deepa Hala Harvey, a fellowship trained breast surgeon, and also happen to be a breast cancer survivor, thriver, and a warrior living my best life. As you know, breast cancer affects millions worldwide, touching lives in a profound ways. Whether you're someone facing a diagnosis or a supporter seeking information or just eager to learn more, this podcast aims to be a beacon of understanding, hope, and empowerment. I'm here to talk about all things breast cancer, from surgery to survivorship, as well as high risk for breast cancer to metastatic breast cancer. My goal is to provide you with reliable information, share inspiring narratives, and foster a supportive community. I know firsthand the challenges breast cancer diagnosis brings. Throughout this podcast, I will give you strategies to handle difficulties that arise from cancer diagnosis. We'll have insightful conversations with medical experts, researchers, survivors, caregivers, and advocates. I will tackle topics that impact our lives as cancer survivors. My goal is to educate you and empower you to live your best life. I definitely have. Well, let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Breast Cancer Podcast. I have the famous Dr. Shivana Diwani here. <laughs> She's a medical oncologist here in Columbus, Ohio, and we are super lucky. She's not only so beautiful and gorgeous on the outside, she's beautiful on the inside. Uh, she has so much knowledge and compassion and empathy, and you're just amazing. And I'm not just saying that. Yeah, that's 100% absolutely You are very kind <laughs> to say that. Thank you so much. So today our topic is a fertility and breast cancer for our podcast. And so this is a question I get asked very frequently, you know, we are diagnosing younger and younger women with breast cancer these days, uh, which is very sad, right? And um, women are not having kids until their thirties. And so being told you're breast cancer, you just feel like you got hit by a train and you're worried so much about the treatment, but they're also in this age group where, you know, they want to have kids in the future. So it's a question that I commonly get asked, like, will I ever be able to have kids after the treatment for breast cancer? And, you know, the statistics have, you know, been that women are keep waiting into the, their 30s and 40s to have kids. And so, I typically say the discussions about fertility should happen at the time of the diagnosis and not wait till after the treatment. And don't think that you have to get through the treatment now and then think about having kids later. It's actually breast cancer diagnosis is not a surgical emergency, meaning you don't need to go to surgery like tomorrow. We have time. Take your time. Take a deep breath. Process the diagnosis. Take your time. It's a grieving process. You go through with denial, uh, anger, bargaining, uh, depression, and acceptance. Go through those phases. Okay. Don't get stuck in any of one of those phases. But if you're wanting to have kids in the future, this is the time to start talking. And so talk to your oncologist about fertility preservation. And um, typically what I do is if they bring up the topic, I usually send them to Dr. Diwani and her partners. And so is there anything women can do to preserve fertility prior to starting the treatment? Yes. So um, great uh, call out on um, the diagnosis uh, that we are diagnosing more and more younger yeah. females with breast cancer. Yeah. So fertility has something over the last one decade evolved a lot. Yeah. Uh, and it's important. And um, the preg um, as far as um, female, you know, pursuing childbearing more in their later ages in 30s and 40s because of their personal and um, professional, professional goals, goals yeah. right? So uh, one of the things that I wanted to point out, like with every decade of life for a female, they lose a significant uh, amount of their ovarian reserve. Yeah. So as what you were in your um, 20s, what you are in your 30s, what you are in your 40s, yeah. the ovarian reserve is extremely different and how much you can preserve is very important. So coming back to your question about what can we do if somebody yeah. gets you know, breast cancer and want to have children in future, because we know that once they are exposed to chemotherapy, chemotherapy has what we call a cytotoxic effect, which kills um, not only cancer cells, but some of your normal cells too. And it can cause uh, irreversible uh, fertility, infertility, and then um, put a woman into menopause forever. So 
what can we do to try and help with that? So there are different things that uh, we approach these females um, and talk about options. Um, and I'm glad to say that we have options. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of them is called cryopreservation. What does that mean? Cryo is basically freezing. So in simple terms, it's basically freezing your eggs, freezing the embryos or freezing ovarian tissue. So that one that's one option. The second option is we use um, shots or medication basically to put your ovaries to sleep while you're getting uh, systemic chemotherapy to try and preserve that ovarian function as much as possible. Your best chance in having a successful pregnancy after um, undergoing treatment for breast cancer is by doing cryopreservation, which is freezing yeah. your eggs or embryo or tissue followed by in vitro fertilization. So that's the best route in terms of having a successful pregnancy. Typically, if somebody has not had um, any form of fertility preservation, what are the chances that you know they will become pregnant? It's small, again, 15% or so. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it, a lot of it depends what type of treatment they had and then what decade of life they are and yeah. what their, to begin with, what their ovarian yeah. reserve is. So those are some options in terms of fertility preservation. That's awesome. That's really good to know, Dr. Diwani. How about someone who's taking tamoxifen? Um, can they get pregnant while they're taking tamoxifen? So that's a no. Yeah. Uh, so you cannot become pregnant while you're taking tamoxifen because tamoxifen can cause birth defects. Yeah. So you have to be very vigilant about taking precautions while you're on tamoxifen. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good to know because, you know, a lot of these young women, we put them on tamoxifen. Um, if you're trying to uh, put them in menopause, you typically give them the Zoladex injection and give them- That is correct, a GNRH uh, injection along with um, something called as aromatase inhibitor that we combine for premenopausal female. So that Zoladex is basically something that um, puts your ovaries to sleep or you know, decreases the production of estrogen from your ovaries. Yes. Yeah. So Dr. Diwani, how successful are women having an, a baby after being told that they have breast cancer? So as far as um, in terms of how the success rate really depends on yeah. what the maternal age is yeah. and the type of treatment that's utilized. Yeah. Typically, we talked about if we didn't do anything, there is about 15% chance of them getting pregnant after all the treatments for the breast cancer. So it's a very small percentage is, chance of getting uh, having a baby, baby afterwards exactly. if you're not being proactive at the diagnosis. Exactly. Yeah. And the time is off a sense uh, in this, um, in terms of when you get diagnosis of breast cancer and you're wanting to have kids in future, you want to talk to your doctor as soon as possible, because based on what comes, whether the surgery or yeah. you're going to need chemotherapy first, yeah. you have that timing is very important because for that fertility preservation, we require about two to three weeks, depending upon where you are in your cycle. Yeah. So we don't want to delay your care, but at least same time, you want to time it such a way that you can successfully able to freeze the eggs or the embryos and then move on with your treatment. So if we go with the cryopreservation, which is preserving the eggs, embryo, yeah. um, followed by in vitro fertilization, you're talking about 73% chance of having a successful wow. pregnancy, which is a very that's high That's a really number. big number. And that's really very promising. True. And then the chances of live birth is around 65 to 67%. Wow. And then the chances of that live birth goes down if the maternal age is it's higher. higher. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that I think goes without even having gone through breast cancer diagnosis. Yes. The higher the maternal age, uh, there's you know less mm -hmm. chance of having babies, right? So exactly. And then as far as, you know, using those injections. So typically if somebody chose not to have cryopreservation or didn't freeze the mm -hmm. eggs um, and they, they just did the shot. So that increases their chances of having successful pregnancy by additional 15 to 20%. So what was 15% that we talked without anything yeah. 
would come up to like 25 to 30 wow. percent. So that's really good. That's yeah. really good numbers, Dr. Duani. So someone can go from, you know, having 15 percent chance of having a successful pregnancy after going through breast cancer treatment if they did nothing, no cryopreservation, and they're not protecting their ovaries as they're getting chemotherapy to 30 percent if the minimum that they did is they protected the ovaries. Oh, so right. it's yeah. really important. And again, the whole point of this podcast is for you to be advocate and ask your doctors the right questions as you're going through this diagnosis. And, you know, 65 to 70% chance of having a successful pregnancy seems like a really good number. number. Yeah. And one of the cool things that I wanted to uh, point out is, you know, especially if you know that you have a strong family history or actually know that have a BRCA gene, those eggs could be tested for BRCA1 oh, and yeah, 2, and correct. they can discard those eggs and actually use the one that does not carry the mutation. Yeah. Yeah. And you can have the select to embryo transfer. Exactly. Yeah. So that is actually really good. And I have, you know, I had people ask me, what is the chance that these babies may have a birth defect? So there is actually no evidence yeah, that uh, uh, increases the risk for yeah. birth defect by doing fertility treatment. Um, also, people ask, like, is this going to increase my risk for recurrence or, yeah. you know, expedite the growth of my um, existing breast cancer while yeah. I'm going? So really, in literature right now, we yeah. don't have that data that it puts any bad prognostic effects on the breast cancer or causes any birth defects. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's really great to know. That's great to hear. So you can enjoy the pregnancy and, you know, not worry about, you know, birth defects. And I, you know, I guess birth defects can happen with or with our pregnancy, right? That so correct. that's something important to remember. Um, and then do these women who have gone through breast cancer diagnosis now, you know, carrying a baby, do they have to follow a high risk OB? When they're pregnant? Yes, yeah. yes. So it would be very important because, you know, uh, in terms of when they undergo fertility treatment um, and later on when they choose to be become pregnant, it would be recommended apart from their uh, regular OB, they do follow or see a uh, yeah. risk OB. Yeah, yes. yeah that's wonderful. Um, so, you know, a common question that I get asked, and it's such a, again, a personalized decision for each patient, but how long should I wait to have a baby? Um after I complete the chemotherapy? So typically um, there is the number that we came up of two years that you have to wait at least two years yeah. after. Nothing magical, but looking at a lot of data in terms of recurrence, like, you know, you don't want to be pregnant and know about recurrence yeah. or interrupt if you are on your, anti yeah. at least have two years of anti-estrogen treatment, have that protective effect in you before you go on to have a pregnancy. So we say at least wait for two years before you actually uh, start pursuing having a pregnancy. Okay. Yeah. So these are the women, say, for instance, if they are hormone receptor positive patients, so they're taking anti-estrogen medication. So how long do they need to take that before they can interrupt that? So um, very good question. Actually, in 2023, uh, in San Antonio, uh, breast cancer update, um, they talked about something called as positive trial, exactly yeah. the same yeah. patient population with hormone positive. So they saw that patients who interrupted their treatment from 18 to 30 months. So you're talking about year and a half to yeah. two and a half years. Uh, they did not see any negative impact in terms of recurrence or having child afterwards. So it would be safe to interrupt your anti-estrogen treatment for that time period. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, have pregnancy. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Um, I think, you know, if you can find someone as great as Dr. Diwani, you're going to be very lucky. But I think the important take home message is it's important to talk to your oncologist of the different type treatment options. And if you're, if you, okay, when you're like, say, 25 and you're diagnosed with breast cancer, and you don't know whether you want to have a baby, you're so young at that time. And I'm sorry that you got diagnosed with cancer. But it's always good to like at least have that discussion with your medical oncologist to freeze your eggs. And if you don't want to do anything with them later on, it's okay. But at least you've taken that opportunity to do that. Because, yeah. you know, we all life happens. We yeah. make different decisions at different yeah. times. Yeah. But you never want to have regret. I wish I would have, you know, yeah. preserved my yeah. eggs. Yeah. So I think that would be important because, you know, you don't know who you're going to meet down the road and that yeah. person might change your mind about having kids and yeah. stuff. So yeah. I think it would be important to... and. Like I said, it would be very important. The time is of essence that if this is yeah. what you really want, we want to expedite having that fertility treatment because it yeah. takes a couple of weeks before yeah. um, we could pursue your systemic treatments. Yeah. 
So I know, you know, being told you have cancer is a life-changing diagnosis. And, you know, the part of the reason we, you know, do this podcast is to educate you, empower you. And so you become your own advocate and, you know, knowledge is power. So take this information and, you know, breast cancer being diagnosed with it, just a chapter of your life, guys, it's not your entire book. So, you know, you can have a good life. You can achieve pregnancy, you know, 65 to 70% if you plan it well ahead of time. And, um, and our, our goal with this podcast too is like we hope you live your best life possible and so uh, to educating you empowering you is really our goal and this is such an important topic to talk about is pregnancy after breast cancer and women are you know sometimes nervous to ask those questions or they don't know whether they want to have you know babies in the future but just ask and you know just be your own advocate so absolutely yes and very beautifully um you said like you know how it is important to go on with your normal life yeah even though you you had breast cancer I typically tell my patients that breast cancer was part of your life don't make it your life yeah yeah, yeah. yeah exactly exactly well thank you Dr. Diwani for your uh, your wisdom and your knowledge and this is so helpful and I hope our audience find this helpful and uh, you know if you like it please share it with other other audience and other you know family and friends and we appreciate you giving us a good rating and uh, take care bye-bye thank you Thank you everyone for tuning into the Breast Cancer Podcast. Remember, you're not alone in this fight. I encourage you to be an active part of this podcast. Please share your stories, questions, and suggestions for future topics at my website called drdeepahalaharvey.com. And please share this podcast with others, especially if you found it useful. And please also give it a five-star rating, if you will. Uh, stay connected as we navigate the complexities of breast cancer. Until next time, take care and keep shining brightly. Disclaimer, this podcast is not intended for complete medical advice. 